Hello everyone. Welcome to this video lecture of 19 SC PHY U301. We have been discussing the first chapter complex numbers and this is the story so far. We discussed quadratic equations because quadratic equations even with real coefficients can lead to complex roots and when this happens when quadratic equations with real coefficients have complex roots then these roots are complex conjugate of each other then we saw a way to represent complex number geometrically geometrically it is represented as a point in this plane which is called as argand plane this horizontal axis is the real axis and this vertical axis is the imaginary axis this point z if is a complex number x plus i y then when i drop this perpendicular from the point on to real axis and another perpendicular from the point to imaginary axis then this length is x and this length is y when i join this point with the origin this length of the line r is given by mod z which is modulus of the complex number which turns out to be equal to x square plus y square y square you can see that from the geometry and pythagoras theorem this angle is rotational angle theta made by the line with positive real axis is called as argument of the complex number which can be calculated by this equation tan inverse of y by x there are three ways to represent a complex number one is this z is equal to x plus i y which is called as the rectangular representation the other representation is polar representation which comes from this r and theta when i write this complex number z as r into cos theta plus i sin theta then this becomes the polar representation of complex number then we derived euler's formula which is e to the power i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta and when we use this euler's formula in polar representation we get the third representation of complex number which is very useful the exponential representation of complex number in this representation in this form complex number is written as r into e to the power i theta it is straight forward to obtain this formula when you use euler's formula in polar representation in last lecture we considered the basic algebraic operations of complex number and their interpretation in the geometry of argand plane the important take home message from this lecture was that you should always change the forms of complex number depending on the operations which you want to perform for finding out different functions of complex number or performing different operations it is convenient to have complex number in one of these forms either rectangular form or exponential form it will be more evident in this lecture that it is convenient to have complex number in a particular form for performing a particular operation or to find out some function of complex number this is the lecture plan we will consider powers of complex number here we will stick to cases where z which is a complex number is raised to n where n is an integer so we will consider only this particular case we will first consider square of complex number and there we will try to keep the complex number in rectangular form and then we'll see that it is convenient to write the complex number in exponential form when you want to find out the powers we'll consider example for this it is now natural after considering the powers to derive this important formula which is called as de moivre's theorem we will see one example of that the last concept that we want to discuss in this lecture is the principal values for that i want to remind that in one of the previous lectures we said that rectangular form is unique whereas exponential and polar form uh, they are not unique multiple numbers lead to the same point in complex plane we will explore that idea in this last topic and we'll see a few examples on this let's start with the first topic powers of complex number where do we start we consider a complex number z which is say x plus i y this x and y they can be positive or negative real numbers and depending on their signs the complex number will lie either in first second third or fourth quadrant so we are considering this as the general form 
Now let's try to find out the square of this complex number z square. How do we do it? x plus i y into x plus i y. So here when I expand these brackets, I'll get four terms which will eventually give me z square. I can also calculate z square by simply consider x plus i y whole square where I can use the formula a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab. So in this case it will be x square which is a plus i y whole square which is b and the last term is 2 into x into i y. This is equal to x square minus y square plus i into 2xy. I have already rearranged the equation. Note here that we have used the concept of i square which is equal to minus 1 to get this step last step from this step. So for z square x square minus y square is the real part of the square plus i into 2xy is the imaginary part of that z square. So this is how we can find out square of a complex number if we keep the complex number in rectangular form. But there is a catch. What is it? Suppose I want to find out z raised to n. How many terms will I get when I expand the bracket? There will be now 2 raised to n number of terms. So the terms are exploding as n goes on increasing the number of terms also goes on increasing and therefore it is difficult to find out powers of complex number by keeping the complex number in rectangular form and what we do for that we consider the complex number in exponential form why because suppose the same complex number z if i write it in exponential form which is r into e to the power i theta r here is square root of x square plus y square because x and y are real and imaginary parts of complex number respectively and theta we can calculate it with this formula tan inverse of y by x which is the argument of the complex number and suppose I want to find out square now so z square is going to be r square into e to the power i theta whole square which is nothing but r square into e to the power i into 2 theta so for this z square now the modulus of the complex number is r square and the argument is 2 theta. In general, if I want to find out z raised to n, where n is an integer, then it is going to be r raised to n, which is modulus of the complex number into e to the power i into n theta, where n theta is the argument of z raised to n and r raised to n is the modulus of z raised to n. So this is how using exponential form is much convenient while finding out the powers of complex number than using the rectangular form. This is the message reiterated. It is convenient to use exponential form when you find out powers of complex numbers. Let's consider a couple of examples. Suppose I have suppose z is equal to 1 plus i and I want to find out z raised to 8. Now imagine that you keep the complex number in rectangular form and try to find out z raised to 8. What will happen? There will be 2 raised to 8 number of terms which you have to handle. But as we said earlier, it is always convenient to write the complex number in exponential form while finding out the power. So what I do? I first convert this 1 plus i in exponential form and then we will try to find out the power of the complex number. So in exponential form, I'll plot the complex number first in argon plane. 1 plus i is going to be here where this length is equal to 1, this length is also 1, this angle theta is the argument of complex number and this is r which is mod z. To convert this complex number in exponential form, let's first find out mod z which is equal to r which is equal to square root of 1 square plus 1 square because 1 is the real part of complex number and same is the imaginary part of complex number. This is equal to square root of 2. I'll keep square root of 2 as it is. Then I need argument of complex number z 
which from this triangle is clear that it is this angle should be 45 degrees but we write the argument in radian and therefore it is pi by 4 radian therefore when i write this 1 plus i in exponential form it is square root of 2 into e to the power i pi by 4 radian so this is how you can convert the complex number in exponential form what is next step now i find out z raised to 8 because i want to find out 8th power of that complex number which is going to be square root of 2 raised to 8 into e to the power i 8 into pi by 4 z raised to 8 therefore is 16 into e to the power i 2 pi so this is 8th power of given z in exponential form. We want to write this in rectangular form. To write it, let's first try to plot the complex number. Where will that complex number be? It has modulus which is equal to 16. So we get a circle centered about the origin where this radius of the circle is 16 then the angle is 2 pi that that means i have to draw a line which makes a rotational angle of 2 pi with positive real axis it is going to be the same line here they will they are overlapping and therefore the point is here which represents the complex number which is z raised to 8 to write the complex number in rectangular form now there are two ways i already know that the imaginary part is 0 and real part is 16 so i can write this z raised to 8 straight away as 16 or i can use the euler's formula i can try to write this as 16 into cos 2 pi plus i sin 2 pi which turns out to be equal to 16 because cos 2 pi is equal to 1 and sin 2 pi is equal to 0. So z raised to 8 turns out to be 16 in rectangular form. Keep in mind that real numbers are special cases of complex number. They have the imaginary part as 0 which is the case here. This z raised to 8 is nothing but 16 plus 0 i. So this is the 8th power of complex number. Let's consider one more example. Suppose now z is say minus 4 plus 3i where do we start we first plot the complex number in argon plane and it is now going this is the real axis this is the imaginary axis it is going to be somewhere here where this length is 4 this length is 3 if I join this origin and the point, then this is R, which is mod Z. And this is the argument of complex number theta. So, first let's find out mod Z, which is R, is going to be equal to minus 4 square plus 3 square under root, which is equal to 5. Then let me first find out phi. I will use this triangle and say this angle is phi. So phi is equal to tan inverse of 3 by 4, which is equal to 0 0.64 radian. Theta, which is argument of z now, is equal to pi minus 0 0.64 radian which is equal to 2.49 radian z in exponential form is 5 into e to the power i into 2.49 now let's try to find out z raised to 4 which is fourth power of this complex number minus 4 plus 3i which we have already written in exponential form this now is going to be 5 to the power 4 into e to the power i 5 into 
this is 625 which is 5 raised to 4 into e to the power 12.45 i want to write this in rectangular form i'll right away use the euler's formula which gives me 625 into cos theta or cos 12.45 as the real part of the complex number plus i into 625 into sine of 12.45 as the imaginary part this is the real part and this is the imaginary part which is equal to 620.8 plus i into minus 72 let me continue my work in this block now since i have run out of place on this slide so this complex number clearly is in fourth quadrant because real part is positive and imaginary part is negative so it is going to be very close to the axis which is real axis so it will be somewhere here with this length as 620.8 roughly and this length as 72.5 this is 72.5 here we will go back to our message that whenever you want to find out powers of complex number especially when you want to find out higher powers of complex number it is always convenient to consider the exponential form of the complex number so even if the complex number is given in rectangular form first convert that to exponential form find out the power which is much easier then you can convert that by using Euler's formula back to rectangular form of complex number now let's consider another very important formula de Moivre's theorem suppose I have a complex number written in exponential form e to the power i theta is it a complex number yes it is complex number with mod z or r as equal to 1 and argument of this complex number is theta so this is a complex number let me find out nth power of this complex number where n we are considering to be integer this is going to be equal to e to the power i into n theta to obtain de Moivre's theorem now what we do is we use the Euler's formula on left hand side as well as on the right hand side what is Euler's formula it is e to the power i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta which is the left hand side similarly if i use euler's formula to find out e raised to power i n theta it is now cos n theta plus i sin n theta which is the right hand side and therefore what we get is cos theta plus i sin theta raised to n is equal to cos n theta plus i sin n theta this is nothing but de Moivre's theorem let's see one application of de Moivre's theorem suppose i want to find out cos theta or cos 2 theta and sin 2 theta in terms of cos theta and sin theta i can use de Moivre's theorem now what it says it says that cos theta plus i sin theta raised to 2 is equal to cos 2 theta plus i sin 2 theta if i consider this right hand side real part of right hand side is cos 2 theta and imaginary part is sin 2 theta so i can i can therefore find out square of this left hand side and then compare the real and imaginary part to obtain cos theta and sin theta let's do it here i can use the equation a plus b whole square it is going to be cos square theta plus i sin theta whole square plus 2 i cos theta into sin theta which is equal to cos 2 theta plus i sin 2 theta this is cos square theta minus sin square theta 
because i square is equal to minus 1 plus i'll take i common so i can get the imaginary part which is 2 cos theta into sin theta which is cos 2 theta plus i sin theta sin 2 theta i'm sorry let's now compare the real and imaginary parts on left hand side and right hand side so for real parts on right hand side is cos 2 theta and on left hand side the real part is cos square theta minus sin square theta and therefore they should be equal so we have obtained relation for cos 2 theta similarly if i consider imaginary parts now on right hand side the imaginary part is sin 2 theta and on left hand side it is 2 cos theta or 2 sin theta into cos theta so we have relation for sin 2 theta also in terms of sin theta and cos theta similarly in general you can find out cos n theta and sin n theta by using de Moivre's theorem let's consider a complex number r into e to the power i theta which is written in exponential form already let's say this point is present in the second quadrant so that when i find out r cos theta this is negative and r sin theta is positive so this is complex number plotted in this argon plane this is real axis this is the imaginary axis this rotational angle now is the argument of complex number r into e to the power i theta let me consider another complex number now r into e to the power i theta plus 2 pi where will this complex number lie now it will lie on the same circle which has radius equal to r because it has the same modulus of complex number as above then its argument is going to be theta plus 2 pi so if i consider this line which is at rotational angle theta with positive real axis then this angle theta plus 2 pi is obtained when i rotate this line this line by angle of 2 pi so i complete one rotation and get back to the same line same point therefore this second number also lies on the same point these two numbers now overlap in argon plane let me consider another complex number let me erase all this let's say r into e to the power i theta minus 2 pi is the another is is the complex number that i want to consider where does this lie now it again lies on the same point so all these three points now overlap because it will definitely lie on this circle which has radius r and now since argument is theta minus 2 pi that means i rotate this line which joins the complex number and the origin by 2 pi radian or complete cycle but now rotation is along clockwise direction since the angle is negative and i get back to the same point so this third number also lies on the same point in general any complex number r into e to the power theta plus 2 pi n where n is an integer such that it is 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 and it all the integers are possible negative as, and positive as well so all these complex number they are represented by the same point in argon plane the same point but different addresses now this is what we mean by complex numbers in rectangular form or are unique if i consider this number x plus i y this point in argon plane then there is one to one correspondence between this complex number written in rectangular form and point in argon plane there is only one number which directs to the given point in argon plane when written in rectangular form but when when it comes to exponential form there are infinitely many complex numbers which lie on the same point in argon plane you take your time and think about it this multi-valued point 
in complex plane actually is very useful when you consider complex analysis but many times you don't want this ambiguity you want that one point should correspond to only one complex number and for that the way out is defining principal values what is the difficulty we had the difficulty is in the argument all these arguments theta plus 2 pi n with n as integers all these arguments gives us the same point in argon plane when the modulus is same we now define range for argument theta if it is in this range minus pi 2 plus pi then we say that it is the principal value of the argument and these are the convention then that one can adapt one possibility is minus pi to plus pi some other references some other books will use this range 0 to 2 pi none of them is right or wrong you can you can choose any one of the conventions and stick to that convention and that also is the principal value we for our course will consider this range minus pi to pi plus pi so when argument is in this range then we will call that as the principal argument let's consider a few examples suppose i have argument which is minus 5.6 radian is this the principal argument now it is not the principal argument so this argument is not principal argument what i do to get principal argument from that i have to add or subtract 2 pi n from this minus 5.6 such that it is in this range minus pi 2 plus pi so i can add 2 pi to get 0 0.68 radian and this now is the principal argument let's consider one more example suppose theta is 12.45 radian this is clearly not a principal argument why not because it is not in the range in the conventional range that we have decided minus pi to plus pi radian to get the principal value what i have to do i have to subtract 2 pi into 2 which is equal to minus 0 0.11 radian so this now is the principal argument for this given angle 12.45 so this is how you can force one to one correspondence between a complex number in exponential form and a point in argon plane we will use this concept where a single point is represented by multiple complex numbers or point is multi-valued in complex plane when we consider roots of roots of complex numbers and principal values we will revisit this when we consider logarithmic functions of complex number let's now revise what we have discussed in this lecture first we consider powers of complex number here we consider only integer powers of complex number and when we want to find out complex powers of complex number it is always a good idea to convert the complex number in exponential form you can convert it exponential form and then use euler's formula to get that back into rectangular form if then we consider de moivre's theorem it is cos theta plus i sin theta raised to n is equal to cos n theta plus i sin n theta we use de moivre's theorem to find out cos 2 theta and sin 2 theta then we discuss the concept of principal values a point in argon plane is actually multi-valued different exponential forms of complex number can represent the same point in complex plane if we want a one to one correspondence between the point and complex numbers then we define a range we by convention we will consider this range when the argument is in the range minus pi to plus pi then we will say that that argument or that value of the argument is the principal value this convention for argument from minus pi to plus pi to be principal value is not unique you can also use this convention 0 to 2 pi 
in next lecture we will use this concept where multiple complex number represent the same point in argand plane to find out roots of complex number we will stop here in this lecture thank you for watching it